Hello again, everyone. I'm back to teach one of my favorite topics, equilibrium. This is where we get to pull together the linear forces and the rotational forces, or torque, to solve fantastic examples of not motion, but the lack of motion, as objects are balanced in a state of equilibrium. Why do I love the topic of equilibrium so much? I feel that it gives a whole new appreciation of the forces that are silently at work in everyday life, such as in our muscles and anatomy. We've actually dealt with equilibrium before, but without necessarily calling it that. When we examined a problem where an object was hanging at rest, or a box resting on an inclined plane, these were objects in static equilibrium. And Newton's laws told us that the net force must be zero. And so we set each of the sums of vector components equal to zero. The sum of the x components equal to zero, and the sum of the y components equal to zero. We also looked at a few examples for dynamic equilibrium, where you will recall that Newton's first law also indicated that an object in motion stays in motion if there's no net force acting. In other words, the sum of the forces is zero for an object moving at constant velocity. Now we extend that by explicitly adding rotational equilibrium, where we will generally stick to static equilibrium in this case. We do this by defining a pivot point or an axis of rotation and then letting the sum of all the torques equal to zero. In terms of problem solving strategy, here's what that looks like. As usual, we want to draw a diagram with all of the info. Then we want to identify the forces and now also the torques acting on the system of objects or group of objects. We'll make a free body diagram for the object, and we want to define our positive axes, x and y. And importantly, we now want to identify a pivot point, or an axis of rotation, where we then define the positive rotation as the counterclockwise. We'll then take and set the sum of the force components to zero, and the torques equal to zero, and we'll solve for the unknowns. As I've mentioned, we've done equilibrium problems before, but notice that now by adding in an extra equation, the sigma tau equal to zero, we can solve for one further unknown or require one less known parameter. So let's start with a simple example that demonstrates the equilibrium within the human body. The figure on the left shows a human arm holding a dumbbell of mass m equal to 12.0 kilograms, with the horizontal forearm making an angle of 90 degrees with the upper arm. And the figure on the right shows the forces exerted on the forearm. The downward force of gravity on the mg on the dumbbell, an upward force fb exerted by the biceps muscle, and a downward force fh exerted by the humerus on the elbow joint. So here you'll notice they've already defined the pivot point. The pivot point being the origin, zero or O here. On the left, we've got a diagram with all of our information on it already. And on the right, we've got our stick person version of this, where we can see our forces, our origin, and our distances applied to it. Let's also define our axes a little more explicitly. So this is my positive y, this is my positive x, and coming out of the page is my positive z. And so a torque in this direction, in the counterclockwise direction, is going to be positive. So that means if I follow my right hand rule, my fingers are curling in the direction from the x-axis to the y-axis, and they're pointing out of the page in the positive z-axis. And so that is a positive rotation if it's in that direction. On my schematic, I can see then that I've got the humerus force here, where the diagram or the question has already defined the pivot point really at the elbow joint. So this is my zero point corresponding to the elbow joint over here. And so the humerus force is downward applied right at that uh, pivot point. The biceps force is offset by a distance db, 
and the weight of the dumbbell pulling down on the hand, being pulled down by gravity, has a, is applying a force mg. I've got no forces in the x direction, or no x components, and I only then have the y components. And so my y components here are the upward or positive force of the biceps, the downward or negative force of the humerus, and the downward or negative force of mg due to the weight of the dumbbell in the hand. And all of that is going to be set equal to zero. The sum of my torques then tell me that I have the humerus force, and it's applied at a moment arm of zero, because it's applied at a distance of zero where I've chosen that pivot point at the origin O, or the pivot point O. And then I have the torque due to the biceps muscle, and it's applied at a distance DB, and it's going to want to torque it or spin it, rotate it in the positive direction, so it's a positive torque. And lastly, I have the torque due to the weight of the dumbbell, and it's applied at a distance mg. And it's negative because it's going to want to pull it downward in the negative torque direction or in the clockwise direction. Okay, and so this one I had defined, I'd also said earlier, was a positive torque. I'll put them explicitly right on there. I never gave a sign to the FH because it's at the pivot point and it's a multiplied by a zero, so I don't really have to worry about the sign in this case. Again, that is all equal to zero. This term falls out because of the zero, and I know this term, I know these, and I know the dB. So I really can use this equation now to solve for the force of the biceps. And I simply have then mg dmg divided db. For a mass of 12 kilograms, acceleration due to gravity, dmg is equal to 38 centimeters, or 0 0.38 meters. I wouldn't have to convert because, in fact, it's going to cancel. The units are going to cancel out with that in the bottom which is 3 centimeters, so 0 0.030 meters. And in fact, I did miss a significant digit up top, if I want to put that one in. So my meters are going to cancel out. And I'll get an answer here of 1.49 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So I've solved for Fb, that means from up above, I can then go and solve for Fh, given by Fb minus Mg. And so I find that the force of the humerus bone pushing downward is 1.37 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So by having the distances of those the bone or the muscles and where they're applied, or the bone and the muscle, and where they're applied, creating a pivot point um, and, and taking advantage to apply that pivot point right at the elbow. So we'll come back to that in some of the other examples. Here it was already defined for us, but by doing that, we then eliminate the variable here in that torque equation and we're only left with FB. The other thing to note in this example is they don't actually include the mass of the arm or the weight of the arm. And so we're going to look at some other examples where we would include that weight. And you could here, if you knew the length of the arm, you could apply the weight of the arm at its center of mass and work that into the problem as well.